Okay, so here's my damaged Geffel M71. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just like show some of the damage to it and you know, what, what, what kind of explain what it's been through. And then uh, at the end, I'll also do a quick example of um, how it sounds before it actually cuts out. Okay, so the first thing to say is that I've had this for like almost 30 years. Um, it's been in storage for 20 of those years. When I got it out of storage, it wasn't working properly. Um, the, the problem that it has is that it cuts out when you're talking or, you know, singing into it or what have you. And it seems to happen when you go like really quite loud or if you blow anywhere into the capsule. So I'm not entirely sure if that's indicative of a problem with the capsule or with the electronics inside the microphone. But like I said, I'll show an example of that at the end. Okay, so just to get on with it. So basically, um, the, what's happened, the thread where you would normally screw the body off the capsule... Uh, or off the head that has, a, has actually kind of come loose somehow i think it's internally spot welded but then the weld may have come off so what happens here i'll show you if i i can unscrew it at this point so there we go so that's unscrewed but if i screw it back on i can also get it off without unscrewing it as you can see, it's wobbly going in, and that's only because that collar with the thread on isn't connected properly. So if I kind of force it and wiggle it, see, it comes off like that, and then the collar with the thread stays in there. So in any event, you know, that's obviously something that's a problem where it's come off at some point in the past. Um, the other thing is it's had a slight bit of damage to the grill on the front here. As you can see, it's got a slight little dent in it, although that doesn't go anywhere to touch in the diaphragm or the capsule assembly in any way. Also as well, there's, there's bits of like speckles of rust on the body here. There doesn't seem to be any on the capsule, oh, sorry, on the head assembly at all. Um, it looks a bit dirty, but it's not necessarily rust up here. But these are like speckles of rust down here. Um, I'm not entirely sure how they've actually managed to get on the, the on the body of the mic because like I said earlier it's been in storage and it had been stored in its box and where it was stored it was it was dry and it wasn't damp or anything like that so I'm not entirely sure how that's happened and then the other problem that I have as well is the the XLR connection at the bottom is a bit wobbly it doesn't come out or anything but it, it, it's 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 a fair bit wobbly and um, from what I understand as well and the GmbH, this is obviously an East German version of the microphone. And from what else I understand, it's got the original M7 capsule in it as well, the, the, the George Neumann capsule. Okay, as you can also see here, um, I'm not entirely sure if I can keep this dead steady because I'm trying to hold it and talk and focus at the same time. But it's an MV692 uh, body that's in this or, or the electronics whatever that refers to whether it's the electronics or the body I'm not entirely sure but yeah so that's what that is and it's the inter it's the phantom 48 powered version um, I think that serial there says 3555 um, I don't know if that will also give anyone an idea as to like when it was made or where it was made Okay, so that's about it for all the detail that I can actually give about like the history of this particular microphone, where it's been, and like the condition that it's presently in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do a little bit of a test with it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug it into a simple preamp and then straight into my camcorder. And I'll have to kind of talk a bit quiet when I start the test, but at some point it may cut out. Um, I mean, it will cut out at some point, but it may cut out quicker than what I'd like it to. But what I'll do, I'll do an example of forcing it to cut out, which will be me at some point getting loud or blowing into the actual capsule. But hopefully, you know, I can get it. I can give an idea of the sound quality of it and how, you know, where it's up to at the point before it cuts out. OK, so I'm onto the gaffle now. And what I'm doing, I'm simply powering this and preamping it with a little unit called uh, a Saramonic Smart Rig, which is actually an amazing little tiny device as well. What I'll do, I'll actually put a link to this below. Um, it's, it's amazing. It costs like £22. It's mega cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this is the, the, the sound of the mic as it stands. Um, I've got no filtering on it, so no pop shield on it. So, you know, we will be getting some, uh, some plosives and stuff. Um, but that's only because I'm trying to show how the exact sound of the capsule is at the moment. So at the moment we're in like just normal, uh, so we're normal flat. So we've got we've got you know we've got no pad on and we've got nowhere uh, no shelving on it. 
So yeah, I'm just going to talk a little bit, but at some point it, it it may cut out as I'm talking now. Um, but even if it doesn't cut out while I'm talking, what I'm going to do is deliberately cut it out uh, towards the end. Hold on. <coughs> yeah, so I will do a deliberate cut of it just to show exactly what triggers it to cut out. Now the other thing bear, to bear in mind with this is, although I think this particular version, the East German version of the mic, I think is susceptible to RFI. Uh, or traditionally it had been i don't know you know whether that was through the entire run of that particular version of the microphone now there's a good chance we might hear some radio interference from my local radio station um now the thing with that it's going to be difficult to tell whether that's the actual issue of rfi that the internal gubbins of this version of the mic actually has or whether or not it's because literally 400 meters away from me is the main repeater station for i think radio city or radio merseyside which is like the main stations in liverpool and uh, i think that pumps out something like 25 22,000 watts something like that and i actually do get in this room i actually do get problems with other microphones as well um interestingly there was some noise in the back there that was my ipad doing some kind of triggering of something there may well be if it's picked that up that's what that was. Uh, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, I know, let me just do a bit of a silence on this. So that should give us an idea of the actual, uh, what, what the noise floor of the microphone's like. Like I said, the preamp I'm using, although to make it cheap, it's amazing. Um, and it doesn't actually add that much to the signal as far as like when it gains. Okay, so that did cut out just then, and um, that was with, without me actually, try, you know, intentionally doing it. So that was probably a P or something, a plosive, or maybe some breath. Okay, so the idea was to try and um, not use filters just so we could get the actual true sound of the capsule. But it looks like, I think it's me breath. Um, or it's prob or it might be plosives that's triggering it. So what I'll do, I'll just kind of carry on a little bit like this, and then we'll see at the end what I'll do. I'll deliberately do it. Um, but yeah, it was just doing it anyway, which is what it does. And yeah, I think I've got a pop a stopper on now, and it, it, it shouldn't really interfere too much with anything. Um, so or at least the tone, it shouldn't really damage the tone of, of the recording that much. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some tests of the switches now. So at the moment we're just in like we're, we're just in like normal gain. So I'll put the, the minus ten pad in. I think it's a minus ten. But the other thing to bear in mind here, just the actual switching of it might actually cut the mic out as well. And also as well, I think from what I can remember, um, the different switching of like some of the switches, some of the positions actually increases or decreases our RFI. And that's not down to the gain. I think it's just down to the actual circuitry change being more susceptible to radio. And like I said before, I do know that, you know, there is a version of this particular microphone that is susceptible to RFI and it used to have to get like remodded or something to avoid it. Oh, and there's a, a compressor's just kicked in in the background off a of fridge now. Um, but yeah, the, the, this RFI that we're getting is just purely because I am so close to, you know, a massive radio transmitter. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play with the um, with the gain on it. So that's now with the pad in. So we should have heard a, a difference there with the pad. And then I'll take the pad out. Okay, so there's the pad back out again. In fact, what I'll do, I'll count up to 10. And when I get to 6, I'll knock the pad in. 1, 2, 3, 4 five six seven eight nine ten okay and then i'll do the same thing as well with the shelf and so i'll throw the base cut in once i get to six one two three four five oh missed it <laughs> i'll do that again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Okay, now what I'll do, I'll do it with both of them. So I'm going to put the, the base cut and the pad in at the same time on six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the, um, the, 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 what's in, the pad and the cut in as well. 
and then I'll do a silence on them as well. Okay, so I'm back into just normal light. Everything's just normal again. Um, I mean, interestingly, this is so far hasn't cut out now. Um, so I'm assuming that a lot of it is now being reduced because of the popper stopper, you know, not hitting the capsule so hard. Okay, so anyway, that's about it now because I'm running the risk of this getting extremely boring. But uh, hopefully this has been a really good, you know, example of like what the problems are with this microphone or at least my initial descriptions and what have you. Um, and the condition it's in, you know, all them kind of things. And yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deliberately overload it with wind so you can see when it does definitely do it. But before that does happen, I would just like to say thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye.